So I'm Lauren. I am our head of consumer marketing at Trustpilot. Um, I've been working in B2C marketing for about 10 years. Before I was in the software industry, I was in the alcohol beverage industry and the financial services industry. Um, Back. All right, so what is Trustpilot? For those of you who don't know, Trustpilot is an online reviews platform. Um, we're a place where consumers can leave reviews for businesses and businesses can respond to that feedback. The platform is free, it's open to use um, and open to see for anyone, so anyone can read the reviews that consumers are writing and read the responses from businesses. And Trustpilot really exists to help consumers make better informed purchase decisions and to help um, businesses manage their reputation online and to retain their customers. Um, to date, we have over 100 million reviews on our platform and over 500,000 businesses that use our platform. So a few years ago, um, my colleagues and I were kind of sitting around talking, saying, like, does anyone even know who we are? Uh, do people even like us? You know, what, what is the feeling amongst consumers? So to demonstrate this, I'm going to do a quick exercise. Um, if you knew what Trustpilot was before I introduced the brand a moment ago, can you please raise your hand? That's really impressive. Um, I'm gonna take it, this is a room of marketers, um, because if I were to pull a bunch of people off the street, um, we would have had very few hands raised. Um, but if I had gone to London and done the same exercise and pulled people off the street and said, do you know what Trustpilot is? Um, we would have had most of the hands in the room raised, and then if I followed up and said, and how do you feel about Trustpilot? They would have had a very uh, distinct answer and they would have had a very firm feeling on how they felt about our brand. And that there is kind of um, the summary of our, the problem that we're facing. Um, we are all over the UK. You can find our stars everywhere. Um, everyone knows who we are. Everyone has a feeling about our brand. Um, and meanwhile, when I go talk to my friends and family and say I work for Trustpilot, they'll be like, I'm sorry, who is that? What, what is that? Um, so we have this anecdotal evidence that people in different regions had different levels of awareness of our brand um, and also different levels of affinity, affinity and how they felt about it, but we didn't have a way to quantify that. Um, so we had these three big questions that we really wanted to answer. And so the first question that we had was, um, what does our regional saturation look like and what is the correlation with affinity in those regions? Second is what levers can we use to pull to impact saturation and awareness and affinity? And then third is, what does this look like seasonally? Do we have the same levels of awareness and affinity year round or does it change and what are the factors that impact that? Um, so what we needed was a brand tracker. So we wanted to measure prompted and unprompted awareness, NPS and affinity, and we wanted to do that globally across our 10 most important markets. So we put together a brand tracker and then we called up our friends at a test and we talked to Alex, our consumer research manager, and she helped us get together a great tracker that was going to help us answer those three questions, um, but also give us, um, you know, help us make sure those questions were unbiased and that we were gonna get the right information to really um, be able to make these, this assessment. So we launched our brand tracker in July of 2021, and we've been running it quarterly ever since. Um, and after we had been running the tracker for a few, uh, a few quarters, we had enough information to start making some ass assumptions about our different regions. So first was the UK. We knew we had high awareness, um, and that was something that you, know, you could have seen from that survey that I did. Um, but we had medium affinity, and this was really surprising to us because historically we had seen a lot of negative sentiment around our brand, but what we were starting to realize is that our detractors were just actually the most vocal about our brand. Second, um, we had low awareness in the US. That was not a surprise since my friends and family didn't know who I worked for. Um, but we had really high affinity. So those consumers who did know our brand really, really loved us and were really big brand advocates. And then we had some really interesting learnings in Italy. So Italy, we had medium awareness, but what we found was we had very, very high affinity. And this was particularly interesting at the time because we'd been doing no marketing activities in Italy. We had done nothing to really suggest that we would have a lot of momentum in that market. So we took all of these learnings and we decided that we wanted to test some campaigns in each of these markets to figure out like how can we actually impact the awareness and affinity with our brand in these different markets. So I'll start with the UK. Um, UK, where we had high brand awareness and sort of medium affinity, we didn't want to run a big brand campaign. We knew that we didn't need to get our stars out there. People are familiar with our stars. They know what we do. Um, so what we decided to do was align ourselves with some of our best and most trusted and beloved brands. So we did a lot of co-marketing campaigns with brands like Peloton and Simply Safe, as well as a ton of other great names, getting our stars out there, being in their advertising, and also um, it positioned us as a trust signal for these brands to showcase to their consumers that they had really high ratings and that we were a trusted destination where people could read feedback on these brands. 
The other thing we did was a huge PR campaign to really address some of the negative sentiment that we saw was so pervasive and the people that were really vocal about um, disliking our brand. And fake reviews is really driving most of that negative sentiment. Um, and we saw that a lot. So we started publishing in 2021 a transparency report where we are very open and honest about the amount of fake reviews on our platform, how many fake reviews we've removed. We're open about the fact that yes, fake reviews exist. We will never be able to get rid of them completely, but we believe we are doing more than any of our competitors to try to keep our platform open and transparent and honest. Um, we also launched our first ever legal action against bad actors on our platform. So we actually are taking legal action against businesses who were um, perpetuating fake reputation on our platform and sending a message that that's not acceptable. Um, and then finally, we used a lot of our own proprietary data and insights to write some reports on things like cost of living, uh, very aligned to what Jeremy was talking about earlier, but really trying to give guidance to consumers on what we were seeing based on consumer feedback on our platform, um, what areas were the most um, being the most hit by inflation, and some guidance on what consumers could do to better protect themselves in times of high economic uncertainty. So what we learned from this um, was first that affinity is cyclical. So as we started measuring affinity and trying to pull some levers to make affinity go up, we saw that in times of really high spending, so things around the holidays, right before summer when people are booking travel, um, we had really, really high affinity. People really love us because we're helping protect their wallets and helping them make good purchase decisions. Then when there's a lot of regulatory guidance around things like fake reviews, that's when we would see our affinity plummet. Um, but generally, brand sentiment is positive. Um, this is a word cloud from one of our most recent trackers. We'll see a lot of the sentiment for our brand is either neutral or even really, really positive, which is great. Again, like we have some very vocal detractors, but overall people really like our brand and think that we're providing them with a lot of safety. And then awareness is growing steadily. So while a lot of the efforts that we had were focused on improving affinity for our brand, um, we were still able to grow awareness by doing some of these campaigns. So then we go on to the US. Um, so the US is a really interesting market because it's a very mature reviews market. I'm sure most of you know there's a lot of review platforms out there. Um, so for us, it was really important that we focus on new and emerging sectors that really needed um, a high degree of consumer trust. So we identified the fintech sector as a key vertical um, where they really needed a trust broker to signal to consumers that they're a trusted place to make a purchase decision. So we ran a two-sided campaign, two-sided being a B2C and a B2B campaign. Um, focused on this vertical. So on the B2C side, um, we partnered with some journalists who wrote some unbiased guidance for consumers that we published on our platform around things like what are neobanks, how do I pick a robo-advisor, and that combined with the, all of the insights that are free and available to anyone on our platform um, really positioned us as a place for consumers to make highly informed purchase decisions, especially around these things um, like buying a mortgage online or refinancing, which are really, really uncertain and scary. Um, and things also that they're maybe only doing once every few years. Um, it really positioned us as a great partner for consumers what, when we publish this guidance. And on the B2C side, we also use some of our own insights um, around reviews and the impact of reviews um, to showcase to businesses that they needed a strong reviews partner to signal trust to consumers. And so some of the learnings here were just that trust is absolutely critical for consumers um, when they're making a purchase decision in a vertical like FinTech. Um, we knew that, we had the assumptions, but it was, we really validated that through this campaign. Um, second is that we have very high affinity with consumers with intent to purchase in FinTech. So we asked a bunch of customers using a test um, how they feel about Trustpilot, um, if they're going to make a purchase in the FinTech space within the next three months, and our affinity was much, much higher than our nationally representative sample. And then finally, a similar learning to what we had in the UK, when we're focused on building affinity um, and when we're focused on building awareness in a really specific sector, we can still have like a ripple effect and have impact on awareness more broadly at a national level. And then finally, we get to Italy. So Italy um, was where we had medium awareness and really, really high affinity. And we decided that we were going to fuel that momentum with a big out of home campaign. So we did a campaign that was really focused on um, telling consumers that Trustpilot is a place that you can find trusted brands. Um, and we infused that with a little bit of humor and a little bit of emotion to really resonate with that Italian audience. This is a campaign that is still running. If you're in Rome, you can go see that billboard um, on the right right now. Um, so the insights are still coming in. It's still very initial, but we really have had some good learnings from the first few weeks of this campaign being live. So first is that Italians are really excited about our brand. Um, they do a ton of online shopping and they haven't seen anything like this before. 
review platforms are not quite as ubiquitous in Italy as they are here, so this is a really exciting thing for them. Second is that traffic is up 35%, which is a really great initial indicator that this campaign is having impact. It's also having impact on the business, um, on the B2B side of our business, so we're seeing things like demos and business signups go up a lot as well. And then finally, we're seeing an increase in platform comprehension. So, you know, as I said, there's not a ton of review platforms in Italy. This is sort of a new concept to them. And Italian consumers culturally are a group of people that really go to their friends and family for advice. Like that's where they, they look to get recommendations. So the idea that they can go to an online reviews platform and they don't need to like call up their Nona for a recommendation is really new to them, but it's very, very exciting. Um, and so there's just a lot of really, you know, increased understanding of what our platform is and the value that we bring to Italian consumers. So I will say, like, we've done, we've done these three campaigns, we have some great insights, but the point was never to just understand campaign performance. Um, for us, it was really about understanding how campaigns can be used to pull those levers um, and to make affinity and awareness go up and down, you know, when we need them to. Um, and it's also about replication, replication and creating a consumer center for excellence. Um, so really making sure that we have this strong practice in our marketing, um, in our marketing campaigns um, across the globe. Another really exciting thing is that consumer sentiment is absolutely being seen as a business driver for us, which is really exciting. So one of the reasons you're not going to see NPS scores in here is because we are a public company and NPS is actually now used as a metric for success for our company. So I'm not allowed to publish those until uh, they go out with our fiscal results. But that being said, um, it's really great to see how the company has gotten behind NPS and really adopted it as a critical business metric. Um, so even teams outside of marketing, like product, comms, support, they're all focused on building affinity and really holding ourselves accountable to that global NPS score. Um, and then we're expanding our brand tracker. Um, so we've done a lot of research on our consumer segments and we'll be expanding our brand tracker to be tracking awareness and affinity and NPS um, with our consumer segments so we can look at that against what our nationally representative sample is um, and make sure that you know, what we're doing is really resonating with our most important set of consumers. Um, and then finally, I mean, this is all in pursuit of helping consumers make better informed purchase decisions um, and helping businesses build trustworthy relationships with consumers. Um, we make it easier for consumers and businesses to trust each other and that is what we're all about. And that's it. Thank you so much, Lauren, and feel free to stand there when I oh, question. one question for you, so hopefully the audience um, went through all that and has a burning question to ask for Lauren, so the first thing we're going to is that one question that Lauren needs to answer. I'm not going to ask one more selfish than a test, but yeah, sure. you've been using us in a great way and you're expanding. Um, I'd love to hear more of the story of when you were looking at other platforms and why you went with us and why you continue to go with us, what were you and the broader team and some of the aspects of saying, for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we had, thank you. Um, so we had worked with a couple of other platforms. We'd done some ad hoc research with SurveyMonkey and we were talking to a lot of the big guys out there. I won't name any of your competitors. I'm sure you know who they are. Um, but you know, one of the things that we loved was really like the hands-on support that a test gives. And I think like that is the one thing when I evangelize a test to people, I talk about how much I love our relationship with Alex, our um, our insights manager and um, even Tom, who's our customer success manager, like they're always so available and ready to help us. And I think we also come from a business that doesn't have an insights function. So I am not an insights person. I'm a marketer and nobody on my team is, you know, insights person. Amanda's here with me today. She's also a marketer, but she's now running our brand tracker. So I think the fact that we can have marketers who feel confident in being able to run these really interesting insights um, surveys and all this research, um, but don't have an insights background and get that support from a test that by far is my absolute favorite thing and definitely the reason we continue to work with the test and will continue to work with the test. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah.